In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to extract fire from an image to use in your own composite. So this one's a little bit different. Uh, we're not going to create a brush or anything like that. We're just going to take an image uh, and just kind of take a piece of it that we can add into our own composite. Uh, so there are some old ways of doing it using the lasso tool, dropping it in, and then using like a blend mode to get rid of the background. So it just be there. But we're going to show you how to use the channels to extract it to get a cleaner look and it allows more flexibility with the design. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my image. And I downloaded an image. I went to unsplash.com. Unsplash is some free images that you can download and use. And there's some really good fire photos there to work with. So that's what I downloaded. So I got this one right here that I'm going to work with. And what we're going to do is we're going to go on the channel. So I'm going to unlock this layer first. And then we're going to click on the channels. Where is my channels panel? So I'm going to go to Windows and go to Channels and open that up right there. And what we're doing is we want to find the channel that has the most detail. Now, obviously fire is yellow and orange and red. So red is probably gonna have the most detail, but we're gonna go through. So I click on the blue channel. You can see it's pretty gray, pretty dark, loses some detail. If I look at green, there's a little bit more. But if I see the red, there's a lot of whites and grays. That's what we're looking for when I say detail, right? So there's a lot of whites, a lot of grays in there. So it's very bright, it's got some good contrast. So I'm gonna use that for my image. And what I'm gonna do now is I wanna make a selection based on this channel. So the way to do that is if you hover over the thumbnail, hold down control and click on that image and you'll see it makes a selection based on that channel. Okay. Now I didn't select everything, but that's all right. We're just going to work with that, get some things going there. Okay. And then what we do is I'm going to go back to my layers panel. And we're going to hide that channel so we can see it. There we go. And I'm going to hit control and J. And that's going to duplicate that layer. And you can see now it looks like it's all there, but if I hide that bottom layer, you'll see I've got just my image, right? Just my selection there. Now this looks pretty cool, but you'll see there's still a little bit like a black kind of like floating in there, kind of the background. Typically that won't really matter, but we're going to show you quickly how to get rid of that. So if I go to my layers drop down menu and near the bottom here, there's this option that says matting. And I'm going to click on remove black mat. And when I do that, you can see all the black kind of disappears and turns into a nice orange, right? So that's really cool. Now we got this extracted flame. So you got more detail. Now, the reason this works better, and I'm going to create a new layer, I'll put that below it. And I'm going to change this color. Let's change it to like a green. I don't know. I'm just going to take a green color there. Here we go. I'm going to hit Control Delete, Control Backspace, or Alt Delete. I'm sorry. Alt Delete is my foreground color. I always get those confused. So I'm just going to throw some up there. There's a little bit of contrast so you can see how it would work. So I've got my flame on there right now, and I can Control T and transform it if I wanted to shrink it down, make it a different size. Right and adjust it there. But the reason we do it this way is we can have more control over it. If I were to use the lasso tool and just select, like draw around that fire and select it out, and then use one of like the, the screen blend mode to get rid of the background. If I wanted to do a layer style effect on it, it would do it around the cutout from the lasso tool. So this now, because I've selected the details of this flame, I can do a layer style such as like an outer glow Right, you can create some really cool effects with that. So maybe do like multiply. Actually, I'm gonna use the eyedropper tool, maybe grab some of this orange in here, maybe this color a little more accurate with it. But now I can create some more effects with that and create a glow around it. Probably doesn't look very good with the dark green in the background, but if you put this over an image, that's a really cool little effect on that. Right, so you can add that to images and do some things with that. Now you can add the layer styles, but now it goes around the actual flame as opposed to around the cutout of it. So that is how you extract fire 
and use it as a really cool effect in your images. There's one more thing I want to show you. And I found this on as I was looking through Unsplash. Oop, wrong one. So this image right here. So sometimes when you see fire, especially like a bonfire when you're burning with wood, you've got these little sparks and embers that fly up. And sometimes you don't have this like just simple flame that we just created. So we want to make something a little bit more realistic. We can add this really cool detail to that. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go to this layer. I'm actually going to make it black so you can see it a little bit better. Yeah, that layer style, is going to get rid of that so you don't see that for now. Um, and we're going to add another layer style to create this um, kind of sparks and embers effect to it. So we'll go back to that layer. I'm going to click on layer styles. And I'm going to click on drop shadow. And it's going to open up. And I'm going to use my eyedropper tool to find the brightest part of that flame. So that bright yellowish color. So I'm going to go normal for now. And I'm going to move it around a little bit. Oh, I see. My effects are not being shown. Let's go to here real quick. Bring my effect back. There it is. So I'm going to get rid of the outer glow for now. Okay. So I'm going to double click on the drop shadow so we can bring that back. So that's what we see here. We've got that drop shadow. We made it a certain color. But what we're going to do with the blend mode is we're going to change it to dissolve. And you got all that around there. So a lot of little details from that, right? We don't want that. We are going to drop this all the way down to like 5%. Now we got it kind of simplified just to those, the fire shape. But even that's pretty big. So I'm going to do 3%. Still pretty big. Let's do 1%. And then, yeah, see, we got the opacity brought it down to like 1% there. So there's a couple of different things you can do with that. And then we can move it maybe like up and to the right a little bit. It's going to add that little effect. So it has a little ember, makes it look a little bit more realistic right? With the embers coming off of that. We still feel like this is kind of maybe a little too much. What we can do is we can actually convert our layer style into a layer all itself to give it a little bit more control. So you saw with that layer style, we can only do so much with it. But what I can do now is if I hover over the drop shadow layer style, I'm going to right click on it and I'll turn it, click on create layer. It's going to give me this little prompt here. It's just said, okay. And you'll see now what it does is that layer, that layer style, that drop shadow is now its own layer. It's not just an effect anymore. So the downside to this is we don't have control. We can't go back into the layer style and adjust it if we need to. It's converted into an actual layer. But with it being an actual layer, I can use my eraser tool. Like maybe I don't like this over here and I want to erase that kind of stuff out. Right? I want to get rid of some of maybe that I have more control now. I can edit these. And I can move this around a little bit. I can even do this as another blend mode. No, nope, I can't do that. I can change the opacity of this now, but I can make that a little bit lighter. Have even less. So remember, we dropped that opacity down to like 1% in the layer style. But now with it as a layer, it goes back up to 100. So I can decrease that even more and make that even more subtle if I wanted to. So really cool way to convert that layer style into its own layer. Gives you a little bit more control over what you're using with that. So um, that's a really cool way. You can even go back to this original layer if you wanted some other colors. And you can do another layer style. Do that same drop shadow effect that we did before with the dissolve. But maybe we want to do a different color. You can change it to that orange or reddish color. Maybe come out here. Okay. Hit OK. Hit OK again. And now, again, right click on that. Hit Create Layer. Hit OK. Now I've got that orange as its own layer. I can drop that opacity down. And I can move that up a little bit in here. 
So now I've got this mix of embers some bright whites and some oranges in there. And again, I can go back with my erase tool and erase some of these out off to the side here if I don't like that, if I want to keep it kind of up in a certain direction. So that is how you can create sparks and embers coming off of your flames, add a little bit more realism and depth to your fire design.